transition switch to center? Is that officially happening? Yeah, I started there first day for spring, and you know, Yen's was really big coming from Schlarm, and everyone's going to know how to play every position. So I'm just starting out center for today, and then we're going to see where our best five lands up come fall. Are making that adjustment difficult for you? Or is it pretty natural? Uh, it has its differences. I mean, a uh, little minute things, where my hands go, how my feet are set. But I mean, having a GA like Drake, who played center at a really high level for a long time, and then talking to Fortner when he's doing his combine and NFL process, it's been really helpful to have those guys and someone I can lean on and talk to for transitioning positions like that with all their experience they've got. Obviously the whole line has this big blue wall, you know, persona, but that center spot in particular has been a pretty long line of successful guys. Does that mean something to you to try and continue that? Yeah, it's something I take pride in. And um, hopefully when we try out there in August, if I'm playing center, I'm going to take a lot of pride in playing that position and carrying on that legacy that Drake and Fortner have started and that Coach Larman started with having smart and dependable centers that can play the game for us. How long have you been snapping a football? When was the last time you snapped a football? Uh, I've been snapping since high school. I played center when I was first starting getting recruited. I played center in high school my first two years. So I did that freshman, sophomore year. So nothing too crazy of a change? No, not really. I have some experience doing it. Going from guard to back to center, what, what, I guess what do you pick up from that position that you can maybe bring to? I think understanding um, – understanding a guard's mindset on plays to be able to communicate better. I mean, I think that's something Luke did really well, where he played right guard, and then me moving into his position, him sliding over, he understood what I was seeing as a right guard, and he understood the angles we want to get. It just made it easier for us to communicate, because he could see the game through my eyes and his as well, to just get us all on the same page. So that has been really helpful, and I think I can replicate that same thing and keep that going. So you said you started with, or you were out there with, who were you out there with? Well, I, I yeah, we just, I ran out with the centers today. Played center. How, uh, you were having a pretty great year. I think ESPN said you were a good season All-American. What was it like to go through that injury and then to kind of just have to watch the rest of the season unfold from the top? Um, it was tough. I mean, I was. it has been a dream come true to be able to play football here just growing up in Nicholasville and being a UK fan my whole life. So it was tough to see it come to an end unexpectedly. But, you know, I think it gave me some time to kind of sit back and just enjoy the process a little bit more. Because when you're game playing and everything, you kind of forget that, like, oh, like I'm, I'm playing football at the University of Kentucky. You're so worried about what blitz is coming next week. So it was kind of nice to just be able to take a step back. I was able to rest and heal and just be able to enjoy being around the guys. We've heard a lot about Coach Ginger reminding people of Coach Larman. Can you feel that in the room a little bit already? Can you, can you see those similarities? Yeah, they work together at Troy. and. They have that pass that they've had together. And so I think that's just been really valuable. We can kind of some of the mannerisms and the coaching points are really similar, just having been together and they coach the position very similarly. He said his one rule is I don't do laziness. Uh, have you seen somebody do laziness? And what are the consequences of doing laziness? <laughs> Thankfully, no. After one day of practice, we haven't seen any of that. And I hope we don't. You know, that's just something that that's the mentality this offensive line has. I mean, Schlarman started that that no laziness. And so I think it's just something we don't have to think about anymore. It's just kind of second nature, the way we strain, the way we play hard. It's just something ingrained in all of us. You heard a lot last year about the wide zone, and then maybe you guys didn't run it as much as we intended. It feels like maybe this is the moment to make that change with the new faces of the line. Coach Yenzer knowing that. What, what's the key to making that part of the offense work? It's just wide zone is, is very different than our inside zone scheme we ran predominantly with Coach Grant. And so, it's just a big difference in our mindset and the angles and the way we approach blocks, where we're going to target different defensive fronts, the way we're going to ID things. And so it's just, it takes about a year or two to really, you have to major in it. You have to be really good at it if you want it to be a part of your offense. It's not just something you can sprinkle in. So we're really hoping to just kind of emphasize it further. And last year with Coach Cohen, he was really able to adapt to what we had. You know, we had playmakers and a running back that was great at running north and south. That's all he did and was really good at it. I mean, that's C-Rod specialty is hitting that hole and going. And so when it comes to the point, you just have to adapt to what we've got and do what we do successfully. And so we kind of ventured away from that, but I think we're going to try and emphasize that more in spring. We have time to really tailor those little details to push that wide zone scheme a little bit more. When you're doing that, besides the reps, just how do you get more comfortable making those? I mean, you, you'd hit it there. It's just reps. It's something you can't just like. You can watch it on TV on the film as much as you want. Anything in football is that way. You can watch as much. Until you actually go out and do it over and over again, those those little muscle memory things, those habits won't build. So I think it's just going to be reps. That's all we need. I know we asked about how Ginzer might be similar to Sarman, but how is Rich? I know it was only one practice, but his gravitas. Like, what is? How, how does he compare? Just in how his coaching style is to to Lynn? He, he's very methodical, you know, the way he does things. And coming from the NFL, it's a very detail-oriented game when you get to the professional level. And I think he's bringing that attention to detail down to us, and it's going to make our offense just much better. What should we expect from, from the tackles? That's obviously a big question, losing Darian and Darren. What should we expect from that group of guys? 
it's, it's a young group, but I think they're ready to rise up to the challenge. I mean, we've got a lot of guys that can play tackle. They don't have much experience. I mean, that's what spring ball is all about. We're going to get as many guys who want to play tackle out there and give them a chance. And whoever proves that they can consistently be the best guy on the field, they're going to be one that plays. So I'm really looking forward to seeing some young guys kind of take that next step, similar to like the position I was in last year. You know, like I hadn't played before, and so it's these, it's these guys' turn to kind of take that next step in their game and take over a starting spot. So I'm excited to see who's going to do that and how they're going to pay attention to those little details in their game. I know uh, a lot of people like to talk about Keontae because he's enormous. Uh, yeah. Kids aren't his size, but what do you have to, I don't, I don't know if tell him is the right word, but how does one get acclimated with SEC football after just coming straight in from high school? Yeah, it's hard, and Keontae is going to be a really good football player, and he's a really nice kid who's really eager to learn, and so we're excited to have him here. He's obviously a very talented guy in high school, and we're hoping that that transition, we're trying to make that transition easy for him. It's hard for every freshman we've got, especially coming in mid-year. He was just in high school a few months ago, and all of his buddies are still in high school. And now he's got the grind of tutors, class, early workouts, and now spring practice. So we're just trying to ease all those young guys along. And he's a kid who, he's a sponge. He just loves to sit up in the film room all the time, just kind of learning the game as best he can. So he, he's going to turn out really well. I believe in him. He's a really good kid. And just once those things start to come to him, he'll be really good at football. Some of the other guys, what's the energy level like you know, coming out of a 10 win season, another bowl win? Were you eager? Yeah, absolutely. Especially, I was eager to get out. It's been a while since I've been able to take some snaps, and I think the guys are just really excited. I mean, we had a good year last year, but I mean, that's past. We have new offense, new coaches that were ready to put a good step forward and just keep building what we were able to do.